Hello everyone, uh, welcome to tonight's Question Time, our weekly live stream where we get together and answer as many questions as we can that you have about Unreal Engine, games development or anything you want to ask me at all. The way it works, all you've got to do is put your question into chat and I'll try and grab as many of the questions as I can in the hour or so that we are here. So, let's say hello to everyone in chat. Hi everyone who's joining us live. Hi Peter, thank you for joining us. Oh, for me. Uh, Monk, Elijah, uh, Arian, how you all doing? Hey, Avoco, raise up my mic volume. It should be okay. Let me know if the volumes are low or anyone else having trouble with the volumes. Up there. Um, hope you're doing well. Thank you, Chris. Um, all doing good. Hi, hi, Paul. Hi, Henning. okay so uh so before we get started with the questions in chat uh our patreon members i want to say much thank you first of all to all the patreon members who are supporting the channel and everything we do here on the channel so as one of the benefits of being a patreon you can get your question answered first and early on the question time live streams by putting your question into our question time q jump on the discord and this week we've got one question i'm going to start off with that one question first of all that question is from uh Big from 84. How to tell if EQS uh, queries fails and the bought out of a sequence if it does fail? Okay, so if you've got a EQS query, uh, I'm not going to do a whole AI setup, but you are going to have something like this. Sequence, select a sequence, and then you'll probably have like an EQS. Query probably followed by a move to. You get the gist, okay? So that's usually the setup you kind of have. Um, now with the EQS here, um, you give it an EQS request, like normal over here. But um, you want to know if it's going to fail or not. If it fails in a sequence, we want it to quit the sequence. Now, I think I haven't tested it recently but i think in memory serves all you do is you untick this update bb on fail when you turn that off it basically tells it that the blackboard won't key won't get updated it will fail and therefore the whole sequence will fail so just untick that and i believe that is the answer to your questions okay just turn that off and then it should quit out the sequence uh because the, the task has failed when a task fails in a sequence the whole sequence fails and then it goes up to selector and it's now pick a new option okay I believe that is uh okay so next question uh look at you in the chat monk dropping up oh, uh so for multiplayer with the default online subsystem i want to do a character select but when you click on a button to switch your character it switches it for your side but not for the other players uh yep yeah. so it's you have to replicate that change uh that's what you gotta do um i believe i've done a, a video on it at some point well, i can't remember when last year year before probably year before last um i showed a, a similar sort of thing where you can cycle through character selections but you are replicating that change so you can make a call to a function to multicast out and say to everyone hey i've changed um changed that okay so Check that out, okay? Oh, pardon me. Uh, but it, yeah, simple as that, really. Um, next question. Uh, Peter Day. Hello. Last time you said you never watch any tutorial and learn Unreal Engine by doing stuff. I found it's almost impossible for me, especially in Blueprints. Any suggestions on how learning on your own? uh yeah okay so uh i can learn it on my own and figure things out on my own uh because of two things first of all um i didn't come into unreal engine with zero experience anything like that i came in with some experience already in programming uh in other game engines as well and when you do come in with that experience and um, it's a matter of you are developing your understanding of how the engine works and you do that by just playing about with it and see where it breaks what doesn't break see how things work and so forth um but you're just 
tearing it apart and, and finding that solution there. But as I said, I didn't come into it completely fresh. I, I came in with some prior experience in programming. Um, by saying that, um, how I learned Unreal uh, via just messing about my own is by just uh, chucking in a node uh, or finding a new node out. I'm like, okay, what does this do? Uh, if there's any documentation on it, I may read the documentation or read the tooltips. Um, or if it's got a value on it, I'll, I'll if I don't know what the value does, I'll just do extremes. I'll make the value very low. Look what happens. Make the value very high. Look what happens. But a lot of it comes down to have, developing that basic understanding of how blueprints connect to each other and communicate to each other. Um, that comes from just mostly understanding how the engine works, and that comes from understanding programming and understanding computer science bits and bobs. Um, my son's here. Hello. It's bedtime. You know that, don't you? You sit there. No, it's off. Already, it's off. Leave it off. I'm working, George. Upstairs. Stay there. Uh, anyway, um, that's all I really do. Um, and it's a learning process. I, I don't know everything in it. I still am learning. I learn stuff every day, but I use it every day. Um, anyway, you can, really. Uh, oh, hi. Uh, green. Is it possible to make Unreal Engine 5.1 Nanite suitable for mobile in any way? I don't think so. Um, I don't know. I don't think so. I haven't looked, I haven't tested it out. Um, no. uh, Keeves, is it possible to make an AI enemy switch behavior trees at runtime? For example, there's a normal enemy AI that plays a normal behavior tree, where enemy is killed and comes back as a zombie. Uh, yeah, super simple actually. So, you got your enemy character, and you're gonna do it in two places. You can either do it on the AI controller, or you can do it at your enemy if you want here too. So let's say, for example, you've got your on death function going on, and when this gets called, um, all you're gonna do is gonna get the AI controller. Roll that to yourself, and. Uh, from here, you just do run behavior tree and choose a different behavior tree, and that's what it's going to do. It's going to stop doing the current one and do a new one instead. Um, if you're doing this on the AI controller, oh, sorry, you just exactly the same, just don't need this bit because it already exists on the AI controller. So. Uh, but yeah, so suppose that just take to run a different behavior tree. And if everyone wanted to stop running a behavior tree and wait for something, you can get the AI controller's uh, brain component. And then from the brain component, you can tell it to stop logic. And that basically stops the running of the behavior tree. Um, there's a few more others you can do in it too. Uh, if you go to logic, you can see you check restarting it, pausing it, running it, all that stuff. Yeah, that's how that works. Um, next question. One two four eight one six three two alphabet. Can you show how to blend between montages based on a direction? I'm trying to make a dash and it's not working right. Uh, okay, so if you're going to do a dash dodge roll type thing, um, and you want to blend, you're not exactly blending together. You could do, but it's long winded. I mean, you're better off doing a blend space and using that instead. Um, so I'll show you an example. Keep bringing some dodging. Uh... Oh, this needs to be easy to do. Surely Epic fix it. Project eight four and we go to my balls and dodges animations. I'm gonna use root motion for this. Go to root motion. 
Take all these. Retarget. Fury 4, Fury 5. Uh, sure, we'll chuck it in there. Make a new animation blend space. Uh, we'll choose the mannequin. Uh, dodge. And in here, we're going to do um, two axes. The two axes are going to be X and Y. So, hold on to be the X. It goes between minus one and one. Good. For axis to be Y. Minus one to one. Back to grid. Um, so, we use a blend space to blend these things together. It works better for one of these. Um, so let me just try and put those in there quickly. Uh, so we've got roll forward, roll forward left, forward right, backward right, left, forward, uh, roll right, roll left. Okay, so we've got these different roll. Now these are all root motions, I just need to enable the root motion. So I'm just going to go select all these ones here, um, all of them. I'm going to right click, asset actions, bulk edit via property matrix. And this allows you to change a setting on all of them at once. You go to root motion, enable that, and then save all. And then that should be root motion. So then I just need to make this work in animation blueprint. So we'll go to animation blueprint. And the first thing you need to do is make it so it can root motion from anything, not just montages. So you go to class defaults up here, change root motion mode from montages only to everything. Then we go to animation graph and we're going to go into the locomotion. Yeah, we can do a locomotion here. Ooh. And in here we can use, actually I'm going to show you something else whilst we're here. We make this a learning exercise. I'm going to show you how you use state aliases. Um, so in here, we add a state called rolling and we're going to there add dodge and just promote this to a variable. So, so state aliases. Now they are there to replace this sort of movement where you do this, this, this sort of stuff. It, it save you from doing this. Okay. But you totally can leave it like that if you wanted to. But if you want to do a state alias instead, um, what you do is this, go enter roll. Okay, the roll goes into there. And let me delete these ones. So enter roll, when you click on a state alias here, you can choose which nodes can go through enter roll without uh, making a connection. So idle, walk and run can both handle this. So tick both of those. And that'll go into there and you just make a, a, a thing in here we'll just make a variable called is rolling like so so rather than having two lines dragging down i have this sort of like wireless wireless setup here for us uh it goes into there and rolling we're gonna have another alias uh not alias sorry um the alias up here and you go exit roll and we'll make that go into idle. And the transition for exit roll will be when is rolling is not true. Uh, or in fact, actually, we can make that automatic, actually. We just go ooh, 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 back, back, back. And transition here and make that automatic. That should handle that for us. So all I do on this one is I say this one's going to come from rolling. So as if there's a line connecting from that to that. But it's wireless. Okay, so that's what rolling does. Helps make things a little bit more easier to organize. Um, so you can see how that works in the other one, in the main states, when they give you this. Okay, so when you're running around, you've got locomotion going on. Uh, but then this to falling is ticked on for locomotion. So when I'm hitting this, I'm going this way or this way. I've got two conditions it could either be. Go to that one or that one. When it's finished doing that, uh, those fall loop, it'll go to landing. Look at this. Look at that, look at that. And this is a state alias here. You can see it's ticked on over here. Hopefully that helps, I understand that. <laughs> so uh, on the locomotion here, we've got this roll going on here. Um, compile that. Then we'll go to my event graph and we are going to do a function here. Or event rather. 
uh, initiate roll. And we'll do is rolling true. X and Y. Are going to be set to there. There. So. Okay, so then all I want to uh, do. I don't think I can get it from on. So let's go to the player character. And let's make it so left shift does it. Left shift. And in the left shift, uh, we're going to get the animation instance of our mesh. Yes, that's the animation blueprint. And then from that, we can cast to our particular one. Uh, third person. No, what do they call it? Cast to. ABP Manny. Oh. And then called out rolling. Initiate roll. I have to give it X and Y. So this is basically my input of my uh, direction of moving in. So I'm going to get the last input vector of the uh, input over here. Get last movement input vector. We're going to normalize this. Okay. And then I'm going to split this. Um, oh, wait, no. First of all, I have to oh, find, transform it, first of all. Not bad. Transform. But well, that's going to be a world input. I want it to get a uh, transform it to a local. So uh, I need to do inverse transform direction. Transform, get actor transform. And then normalize it to get a flat number because I mean this shouldn't this shouldn't cause an issue because it should be flat anyway But I want to flatten it just in case with normalize We we'll just split that and I can just put that into there X okay. Okay, And that's it So um, I think that's it Wait Uh, so the transition isn't working. I'll just do that manually. Uh, here. No, not here. That's because I forgot to. Uh, rolling, go to blend space. Tell it not to loop. Wait, wait, do it once. Hopefully not. Uh, although I can't move. I'm stuck in the ground. Why can't I move? That would be because... I... Yeah, that's because I haven't made the... Uh, excuse me. If I go to the animation blueprint. Need to do a fun thing on your Exit roll. And turn is rolling off. Helps. Uh, it's just getting stuck in the loop of making it roll. And the way I'm going to make it call this, by the way, is I'm going to go to my state machine. I'm going to go to exit roll. Not exit roll, sorry. Uh, this one, rolling. Go to events. No. Yeah, this one, sorry. Up here, animation state. And do left state. We'll do this one as exit That should call this one. Yeah, I believe that's that calling that. Oh no, it's this one I want to call. Back to that again. Uh, it's working. I think the last input vector is broken. It's going. It's going the wrong way. I need to. I don't think I need to transform it. Then maybe I'm mistaken. Uh, person blueprint character take off that transform if that was but even normalized to no why is it always going that way um unless x and y are the way round if the value is the wrong way round
There you go. Okay, now I think I have to transform it. Yep, there you go. Okay, so you're not blending a montage, you're doing this sort of blend space method instead. So you could probably do it with a montage system, but that would involve having uh, multiple montages uh, do a check to see what uh, section of the montage you want to do. And that's a, a bit of hassle. This way it's a little bit simpler, a bit cleaner, um, a little bit nicer. Okay, next question. Uh, Lucas. Hey Ryan, what did you used to do before you using Unreal? And when and why did you decide to learn and teach Unreal? Uh, so uh, I, I've been a teacher in, in game development for over 12 years. I was and I picked up Unreal, uh, what, five and a half, six years ago, because I was um, refreshing the courses I was on and rewriting them from scratch. And Unreal felt like a good option to go for. Uh, people who were using other engines, Unreal felt like a good entryway to teach students because yeah, it was fairly simple to get going. You can do quite a lot with it. Um, it's quite flexible. It was a really good one to go for. Um, and I got addicted to it ever since. I was really enjoying making it, stuff with it, and um, I just stuck with it. Uh, but yeah, prior to that, I was teaching other engines uh, in the classroom, and I was also making my own games and other engines, uh, and so forth. So, um, ba -ba 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 Echo, hi. I wanted to implement some real shop in my game, like sell new content like dungeons and stuff, but I don't know how to implement a payment system and can't find any tutorial about it. Okay, so it depends what platform you're on, Avoco. So, um, who's running your point of sale? Is it going to be Steam, uh, GOG, uh, Xbox, PlayStation, you know, which platform is handling that, that transaction? Um, as Once you've got that idea in mind, um, it's kind of long-winded to go through today, but on their pla on their platform, you'll indicate the different things that people can buy, and each item will have a unique identifier code, and you can uh, define them all in here. Um, so, for example, um, I forget what I call it in here. Uh, oh, maybe no, no, not in there. Sorry, it's um, you just do it straight right, straight in there. Uh, so making that purchase yep yeah. and you define and build this thing and this product identifier is the unique identifier that you put in to uh from the website and you determine whether or not it's consumable or not and that's it and the website will then handle the purchase order because they are handling all the credit cards and things like that and then it'll return back saying yes or no and that's what this return value is here pull back and in here, you could, do, you could probably do buy an event on failure or success. And if it was successful, you unlock the dungeon or unlockable, whatever you want to do. Uh, and they'll give you a load of receipts and information about the uh, the purchase as well. Um, you handle things like that. Now, if you want to display information about your purchases, um, you can also get... Um, Store, I can't remember what I call it now. Uh, in app purchase, yeah. So, in here, you got make in app purchase, process any query for own purchases. So, that's how you can read, um, like their um data to find if they've actually purchased anything before when you ask for like initial load. Then, there's also read. In app purchases, no, it's restore. What one? Read. Right one. There you go. Um, so you put in the different product identifiers in here. That's just an array, and this will output success or not. So bind on success. And this gives you all the information about the purchases. So I can now do a for each loop on this uh, loop on this array. 
break this open and that gives me all the information about the item so i'll get the title description how much it is uh it's code discounts if there are any all those sort of things i can get that from all from here so that is just going to do all the work for you and go to the store and grab it all and when it does it returns this you have to do this binding because it's what we call asynchronous um so basically it fires this off and it waits for it to hear back and that's what that is doing um and it, when it hears back it gets all this information uh, from the storefront but it does involve just setting up on the store first so if you're on, the, on steam or google or ios or whatever you have to define all those in-app purchases there Um, you can go, do you want to go to mommy and daddy's bed? Go sleep now, go sleep. Oh well. Anyway, um. Da -da 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 -da. Uh, next question. Um. uh monk popping up for animation controller i have a blend space for eight directional animations but i have uh, in the controller i played the jump animation but it snaps only when i'm not moving how do i blend this oh not uh blend space for eight directional animations i'm not entirely certain what you're trying to do can you give me a bit more information there uh monk i'm not it doesn't make entirely sense to me Elijah's Nigro system how to make a simple flat expanding circle on the floor. I have issues with scaling. Sure, let's go for that. So, Niagara. I should do it in here. Uh new empty one. Uh we'll do AOE because I'm guessing what you're doing it for. Area of effect. Okay, so circle. Now we'll add an emitter. Yeah, we'll do an empty one. Right render, I'm going to use the circle one. And for the emitter update, we're going to do uh, burst and just spawn one in. Uh, and now I want it to change its orientation so it's flat on the floor. So to do that, I have to go to the sprite renderer and change its alignment. Uh, not alignment, sorry, it's uh, facing mode from face camera to custom facing vector. And when you change to that, it's going to choose whatever this is down here uh, the sprite facing vector. And this by default is not what you want. So you need to change this to a custom variable. So on your uh, system here, we're going to add a uh, user parameter. So go on here. Let me do it. Oh, down here now. Sorry, I forgot they're down here. Uh, make new. I want a vector. And we'll put one in the Z. And we'll just rename this one to be custom vector. So, right. So in the sprite renderer, I go down to sprite facing and change it to my custom vector. Now you can see it's on the floor. Now, if I wanted to change its size over time, I have to go to particle update and do scale uh, sprite size. Now, this sprite size can go from zero to one for the whole entire thing. But you see it's disappeared. This is probably what you're encountering. When you do scaling, you have to go back to initialize particle and set the size of the sprite or mesh, whatever you're doing it with. So if it's a sprite size, go to un unset and change it to uniform. And we're gonna change that to uh, 500. So now it's gonna scale up and reach the end of its life and then disappear. Okay, and now we've got like, a flat expanding circle. You're probably forgetting this bit. It trips people up, it trips me up all the time. You have to make sure you set the size in order for the scaling or anything to do with scale to work. Um, hopefully that helps you out a little bit there. And to show that working in world, I'll just drag it in.
my son. Like pain in my bum. Um. Keeps. Uh, 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 oh, hold on. Um. Uh, yeah, Keeps. You made a portrait orientated. Uh, oh, sorry, Jeff. I missed your one, Jeff. Uh, how to blend the camera smoothly between third and first person? Example: third person character pulls out a compass and switches to first person to see it. Um. So you'd have two cameras on your character. Um, so if I go into here, and I'll add another camera to this, so we've got a first person camera. Okay. Uh, we set to use pawn control rotation and, uh, yeah, that'll do. And then I'll make this, uh, deactivate the other one. And then take the mesh and make that not visible as well. Otherwise, you see it clipping through. Mm -hmm. um, yeah. So, this should be now in first person. Yep. So, if I wanted this now to zoom out from that perspective into a third person one. I'm going to set the camera boom that the third person camera is attached to. And set the target arm length for that to zero. Uh, oh no, that's not wrong. One. Zero. Uh, I'll also add the offsets here to make this look a bit better. Okay. So on the event graph, when I want to uh, change view, I custom event, change view, and I do a timeline, uh, changing view. Play from start. Open this up. And we're going to add a float. And this will be cam distance. Add two points. The first point we'll do at zero, zero. Second point we'll do at uh, one, uh, 400. Okay, so it's quite fast. And we'll change the length for that to one as well. So then back on my event graph, when I've got this changing view, I'm going to make this be my camera boom. So I'm going to do this and do set target arm. Get it right. Target arm length. Now I will also then make my uh, mesh also become visible at a certain point. So back on my timeline, I'm going to add another track to it. I'm going to add an event track. An event track is um, I'll just call it trigger. Um, is going to trigger when that. Visibility changes, so I'm gonna guess somewhere around there. As you notice, there's no line for this one. You can just place it wherever you want. It doesn't matter about time. The value doesn't really matter. Um, so I'll do 0 0.15 ish there. And I go to my event graph, and now trigger is gonna be this thing here. And I'm going to tell it to make my mesh visible. Uh, oh wait, I met hidden in the game. I've got to change it to set hidden game. False. I need to make change this one to be not quite hidden. <laughs> okay, so that does that. Um, now, before this all happens, I need to switch the camera over to this one. So I'm going to take the uh, camera boom, not camera boom, follow camera, and the FP camera. FP camera, I'm going to do deactivate. And the follow camera we're going to activate. Now I've just got a cool change view. So I'm going to do this one on left control. Do change view. And then that should work. So what's going to happen is it's going to switch the cameras by yeah, turning one off and turning the other one on. And it's going to start a timeline. That timeline is going to change that camera boom's length. By a certain value and that's gonna make it look like it's zooming out and then the hidden game i'm going to change the mesh to be not hidden anymore at that certain point i don't want to do it immediately before because it'll look weird and clip through hopefully this will hide that we'll we'll see how it works that uh, time so running around in first person hit control there you go yeah 
And again. There you go. So now you can do that with dip change the timing of it and check, tweak things like that. You can even uh, lerp the um, the uh, distance of the offset if you want to make that even smoother. You can do quite a few things you could do with it. Have a bit of fun with it. Um, yeah, have fun with that. Um, next question. Um, Jordan Ness, couldn't you do it with one camera too? Just making that boom lo longer and hiding, unhiding the mesh while skipping the extra camera logic. You could, but the problem you, the only thing you actually have to do, and this is why I don't tend to do that is because there are settings you want to turn off and on with various cameras but this camera here you don't the follow one the third person one you don't want to have used pawn control rotation whereas this one you do so keep that in mind um and if and if when you turn that off you could get a weird jittery issue where um it will snap to a different position so it's better to have two separate ones because then you don't have to mess about too many settings you can just leave it as two different things Um, uh, Robin, hey Ryan, because of you, I've started doing UE tutorial videos. Oh, cool. Thank you for everything. You're welcome. Uh, optimization question triangles versus, versus vertices, which is more costly? Uh, they're very, very closely tied together. Um, you can't increase one without the other um but i would suggest probably vertices are probably more costly i wouldn't know for, i don't know for certain the only logic behind vertices being more costly uh if if they are at all is going to be because of things like um the materials and all that relies on vertices to paint uh the materials and to shade those on as well as do vertex manipulations vertex coloring we use vertices for a lot of things um so they I would suggest they're probably more costly, but they say they're very closely tied together. And it's going to be negligible about which one's actually doing more cost. Okay. Um. Toast, hey Ryan, do you have a video planned in your current inventory series to merge it with the equipment system version 2 you started a year ago? Thank you for all you do. Uh, currently not. Um, that's not on, on the on the docket. Um, but sh you should be able to figure out how the two to work together. My advice with all my tutorials and everyone else's tutorials that you watch online is don't rely on the tutorial to solve every single problem. It's impossible because I can't make a tutorial that will solve everyone's game design. Instead, take lessons from that tutorial. What are you learning from it? How does it work? What are the systems being used? What are the tools being used? And and, and all this stuff. And if you're watching multiple versions of the same thing, so if you see an inventory system here, an inventory system there, inventory system here, take note of what's common. And you'll realize that those are common things that you need to make sure you include in your own design. And then you can come up with your own solutions. Uh, the equipment system, it, it, it can be easily added to the inventory system. But you could easily figure that out. Um, if you just pay attention to the actual series and pay attention to what you're learning from it, rather than just blindly copying it, you're going to have a much better time. And that's when you're going to actually get better Unreal, is when you can start devising your own solutions to problems and come up with things on the spot. Like I do, for example, during these live streams. Um, I'm able to come up with things on the spot because I I've built the understanding of how things uh, operate and how things will work. And... Uh, from that can make informed decisions about my design and my technical choices so um 
yeah, watch both series, learn from both, and take away and see if you can make them work together on your own. Um, Charles Animation. Hello, I'm an aspiring environment artist working my way to make more quality environments. Would you say that learning blueprints as possibly making a game is a good learning experience? Uh, definitely. Yeah, 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 yeah. Um, so what makes a really good environment artist is not just the art side of things. The thing you don't want to neglect as well is, well, there's two things you don't want to neglect. One is the power of blueprints that can help automate a lot of your processes. Um, how to make more things more procedural and how, how, how help you speed up your workflow. Those sort of things are going to make you a far better environment artist. Um, secondly, if you were to make a little game or anything like that, it's a good way to apply an environment to a context. Like, for example, I see uh, a lot of environment artists on their portfolios and so forth make really beautiful environments and like really intricate, really designed, lots of detail. But then I question, I go, well, how does it operate in a game at runtime? How does it work in a certain perspective? How does it work in a certain kind of run around in it and all that? All those sort of things that like you write about things like where the camera is going to be in that position. Like it's so it's 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 all well and good to make an environment look good but to actually make it useful for a product that's a different entire story so by making a game it helps you apply context to what you're making um and so for example like if you're being uh, like the, the role of an environment artist is to take the block out that you get from a designer and make it look pretty but you can't change anything about the block out you're limited to that so you're like okay that's my constraint i've now got to make that look good that's going to help you get into a better position. So if you go through the process of blocking out for a game first and then go through the, those processes, uh, you'll learn a lot more, I'm sure, and be a lot more useful. For you. Um, Paul asks, oh, this from Henning. Paul asks, how can you make a type of hand grenade you can throw and explode? Uh, okay, so... If I make the grenade first, grenade. This is going to be a projectile that you throw out. So we need to add a projectile movement component, and we're going to add a sphere to it. So I make that the root, and then I'm going to change it to be something like physics. Um, actually, do I have to take the? No, 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 not so nice, is it? Uh, projectile movement would do it for me. Uh, so the speed will be how fast it's going to come out of you, uh, out of your hand. So we'll do, I don't know, a thousand, a thousand, that'll do. Uh, compile that. And that'll do for now. Next, I'm going to go and create the explosion. Um, so, uh, we actually, we could do it. I know we make explosions as a separate actor. I can spawn in because I need to make it just once then and I can add it to any act I want. Um, so I'll, I'll show you how to do an explosion. Um, but then if I make it this one actor, I say I can put on anything then. Um, so I want a particle system, cascade particle system, because I'm going to use the explosion that comes with it. And if you want to do radial force, you can do um, on an event play, hit the radial force and uh, fire impulse. I'm not going to bother messing about the physics settings. You, you get just that. Um, but then on a grenade, you put a timer on it. And that timer, you'll be able to make, make that the lifespan of it. So lifespan, we'll make that equal to five. So after five seconds, it will detonate. So we'll do on end play. We'll just do. Uh, I'll do an early one. Do a custom event for detonate. We'll detonate on here. The reason why I'd make this a separate uh, event or function compared to putting it all end play is because if I wanted to add a reason for it to detonate sooner, I can do. Um, without doing any extra work. So on here, we're going to do spawn actor from class. Explosion. 
get actor transform always spawn and that'll do okay and then on my player character i'm gonna launch it and you want to give it a launch trajectory and the easiest thing to do launch trajectory um here, unless you're doing manual aiming which i'm not going to do now because that's going to take too long to set up um i'm just going to add an arrow component let me do this and we'll just change that position change the angle that. so and then on the event graph when i push the one key we'll make it spawn actor from class and give it uh the grenade Spawn transform is going to be this arrows transform. Get world transform. No, it's set. Get. Go. Okay. And we're going to do always spawn, ignore collisions. And let it do that. And that's basically it. Uh, oh, you, you may also want to set the owner to self as well. Um, because when you do that, you can make the grenade ignore itself. So I'm begin play. It's fear. Ignore actor when moving. Actor will be get owner. Ooh. And then I can just tick the box and plug it into begin play. So when it starts, it's going to tell it to, hey, it, my owner, I'm going to ignore you with all my collisions. That's a good way of making sure it doesn't clip through you. Um, let's see if that was enough. There. May need to change the size of it, <laughs> but there you go. Okay. And if we did a bounce around and stuff, let's change the size, make it bounce. Change the size here to 0 0.2, 0 0.2, 0 0.2. Go down the projectile movement. Should bounce. Yep. And. Mm, yeah, do that. Still bumping into me. Uh, oh, yeah, hang on. I know why the size is going back to normal. I open up. It, um, it's because my transform. at uh 0 0.2 0 0.2 0 0.2 uh yep so why is that bumping into me didn't do well, we'll just back on potions oh anyway um so that's how you do grenades um obviously you can make it do damage make the explosions bigger make it do physics all that stuff um i've got videos on that sort of thing you can check it out they're quite old but they should still work uh next question he's asleep now uh daddy how would i make a physics based ropes my character can hang on at two and swing like tarzan um, I don't think we can do that in 10 minutes, but I can kind of show you the gist of it. Um, okay, um, so right, hmm. it depends on how realistic you want to make it. Uh, because it, if you want to make a rope, for example, um, you can make it an actor. Um, and then you'd have on there a cable. Be your rope. There you go. Uh, but cables aren't, you don't really have them as collidable objects. You can't really, you don't want to be able to grab them. 
So, um, we'll make it swing from a single point, and when you grab it, it will swing about. Um, so, from the attach end, you're going to turn that off. And there's a swinging bit. Um, cable length, we can change that to 600. Make it longer. Yeah. Uh, like so. Um, actually, I've got an idea. I've got an, uh, cause, uh, there's no, I don't think the ropes generate hit events. So I'll double check it, but I don't think they do. Um, they do, then we're in luck, but I don't believe they do. You always check if we're going here. Uh, on component hit, okay, may, may be able to. On component hit, uh, if other actor equals, let's have a look, see if we can make it. Again, this is one of those things that I may be mistaken. I may be able to, uh, I've never done this before. So let's have a look how we can do it. Get player character. I'm just trying out ideas to see if they work. I'm thinking I've got to hit the rope. I've got to, when I'm thinking of something new that I haven't done before. I've got to think. Okay, the logic of this is I need to hit the rope, and then I need my my uh, my physics to take over and push on the rope, um, and attach myself to the rope, which is going to be tricky. Um, now, if I'm jumping. Physics is technically enabled already on my character. So, if I can do attach actor to component, parent component being the cable, location rule, I'll say keep world, keep world. I want to world simulate body. So, if you're doing two physics objects, which are these, both of these are, I want to weld them together. Let's see what that looks like. Out of curiosity. I don't think this is going to work. It never works first time. But we can at least try it out. Yeah, no. Don't have, don't have collision. Unless I've got collision turned off on it. Hang on. Edit rope. Cable. Collision. Yeah, no. Uh... So cables don't tend to have that sort of collision. Um, oh wait, no, no, no! So I have to do simulation generate hit events. So I have to turn that on. The hit events don't work, and if they're in physics objects, you have to turn this on. All right, let's try this again. Uh, like that. Oh, let's go third person. Nope, got tricking. Okay. Um, I, I thought that was the case. So. Hmm. So the way I'm thinking this has to work is you need some sort of collidable object going down. It could be a series of collidable objects that are chained together with physics constraints. That would do it. But I don't know. Certain. So, I mean, like, for example, if I put a capsule component and make this capsule here really long. Like this. And yeah, and then add event component uh, overlap and put this on this instead. Let's see if that works. Yeah, it's gonna be a lot more involved. Um, it would, so um, with uh, those things working, then we're not gonna make those things work because what we'll need then is to say to our thing to change movement mode to flying, 
and then change the physics on it to do that. Uh, there's going to be a few things we need to do on it. Um, I don't think we're going to have time for. Um, I'll double check to see if we can do an, e an easy version. Hang on. Um, we take the overlapped component, simulate physics on it. Uh, not overlapped component, the other component. That's not even true in that. Hang on, what's going on there then? Uh, hold on. Let's break point. At least trigger it. Yeah. Uh... Target should be capsule. Yeah. If I turn that off... That attachment like my thing should just roll around oh yeah like that so maybe I need to attach the component to it rather than att do attach actor we do attach component to component by that it may be the case that we just can't attach to a cable uh keep world keep world doesn't like doing attachments so yeah it would be a case of changing its uh movement mode to flying so the other act this would go set movement mode flying the gravity turns off on it uh, and then you want to stop movement um, oh man there's a lot yeah there's a whole ton of work in it because you make you want to make physics work you have to do a physics constraint physics handle um, yeah it's, it's quite involved I do this I'm flying <laughs> Also, I'm not attached to the rope. Um, we could probably tell the rope to attach to me. Um, so you go to the rope table here. To attach end to. Get player character. Um, Uh, oh, I need to, to actually attach. Attach. Uh, set attach end. And then that should, should stick to me. Yeah. Um, but obviously I have full control of it. The rope's not limiting me to it. If I want the rope to limit me, I need to either do a canned animation or do physics. And if I'm doing physics, then I need to do a load of work to make that happen, uh, to make the rope work with me. Um, not an easy setup. I'll maybe do a video series or something at some point and do the whole whole shebang. But yeah, it's not going to be straightforward, that's for certain. Yeah. By the way, the reason why that overhangs a little bit is because of the offset. If I turn that down to zero. But they put a hundred offset on it by default. Oh, hello. Why are you not going down? Yeah. Mm. So yeah, yeah, it's it's something. <laughs> but um, yeah, um, you do that, and maybe maybe. No, I don't know. <laughs> you have to. I mean, you could do. Yeah. One of the, I'm trying to think of other uh, if there's a, sh a quick, easy ways, but I don't think there is going to be. Um, I'm 
name one. Uh, we'll leave as none. Component name two. Set component. Uh, set constrained components. Component one, I'll leave alone. Component two, we'll make the root of this. Root component. Ah, oh, no, I can't. Um, capsule. Um, yeah, I could just do that. Uh, component, train that. Simulate physics and on. Uh -huh. okay, we'll try that out. Hey, <laughs> kind of, kind of there. So I'm not doing anything. So, kind of, kind of something, the start of it at least. Um, so, I mean, let's try with a bit more power behind the jump. Hang on, let's go up here. So, I mean, it's just about well, just fig like just bashing against it until you figure something out. Ooh. <laughs> And then I guess if I want to drop from it, I have to tell it to handle that. Um, I could do get player controller on this. And then from get player controller. Obviously the bit that's broken is that I'm touching the end to the player and the end doesn't is going to go up like that. I've got to grab it from the middle, which um, that's the tricky bit. Um, because you can't really do that easily. Um, but anyway, get player controller. We do uh, enable input. Yeah, and when I hit the uh, two key, that's two. Uh, and I do. I do um, uh, I'll do space bar and when I push the space bar I'm going to get my player character get capsule component. and I can now uh, set simulate physics off uh, I want to set the rotation of it. So set rotation, world rotation. I want to keep the yaw. I want to get the world uh, relative. No, yeah, world rotation. I oh, know. I want to get just control rotation. Yep, just control rotation. From this way. Control rotation. Um. Split that, split this, put the yaw in there. Then I'll have to take to disconnect from the physics constraint. So uh set component and components. I'll just leave that as blank and it'll be okay. Hopefully. Um if it's spacebar I should drop down. I think. Um Oh, a set movement mode. Uh, the mode here to falling. Um, so I think
Kind of working. Uh, I need to detach the rope, but you know. Kind of, yeah. Let's attach the rope. So, do the rope. Uh, set end. Attach end to none. I could just do it. Uh, yeah, no, I'll do that. Yeah, set um, end. End. False. Yeah, I think so. So if I go in there and try this out, not bad. Let's do a little test. If I put in another little platform, can I use this up? I don't know why it's not dropping down as it should. Did we add a little offset on it? Maybe if I do a little like five on that. Right up there. Yeah, weird. I don't know what that is. Okay. Um so to make that jump across there. I'm gonna go along here. Yep. Yeah. Bad. And what I could do, because these are physics objects now, one in the air, and it's and it's reading inputs, I could put W and S on it to read swing on it. So let's like add a W onto it. Uh, if I go um, forwards, uh, if I do actually I A forwards, hey, what's it called? Move. I move. There you go. Um, if I do I, I move and I do the action value here. Split this, and I want to do add force to the player character. So get player character, and I want to get capsule component, and then we're gonna because we have to get component. You can't do physics stuff with non-components so you have to get a component and in there we have to do add force there and the force i'm going to do is going to be this multiply split this by my uh y value because that's my up and down y so oh wait i'm not going to split that i want to convert to float there you go why and then i'll give it some force in here so this would be oh, i need to make this actually forward vector don't i Crap. uh get forward vector um and multiply that by uh by that, by that, by that, and I'm pinned to this, that's it. So multiply that by that, then multiply this by how strong I want it. That pin to float, and this bit of strength, we'll do 5,000. I've no idea if it's going to be enough or too little, I have no idea. But in theory, that should, as a hold down W, should force my character to swing further forward. If I hold down S, it should go backwards. I don't know if that's working or not. I might have to give it more value. I think it is working because otherwise it would start slowing down now. I think I am adding a force to it. I think it is working. Turning around though. <laughs> By accident. Uh, okay, let's give it a bit more juice on it. So I'll change that to 10,000. I'm impressed I got, got this to work so well. It'd be uh, a lot uh, more 
cobblestone. But obviously, there's a lot more you can do to it to make it better. Now I'm adding 10,000 to it. Yeah, I'm de that's definitely working. Nice. Obviously, you have an animation and all that fixed, but. Okay, let's give it a bit more juice on it. Um. I'm not adding force. Oh, it's because I'm running into it when I do that. Hold on. Uh, do that, do that, do that. Oh, I need to disable input on it when I leave. Um, disable input. Okay. Get player controller. Okay. Because uh, it was still registering this when I was walking around um, after the fact. But it's going to do this. We're going to add this by. We're going to do a fact another factor of five. So it's now five times as strong as it was before. What if we can get to do a loop the loop? Oh yeah, go Rusty, you got the same idea as me. Can I do a loop the loop? <laughs> oh, right, let's go now. Woohoo! <laughs> and because that physics constraint, by default, physics constraints are not set to change their uh, location. They're just set to rotation. That's why it's not dropping down on his head. But we've got a loop the loop there going. Yeehaw! <laughs> That's fun. Cool. <laughs> Those are fun. Uh, I grab onto it. Ah. 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 I don't know. <laughs> okay, I don't know. Let's see if I can grab it again. Uh, it's because the the reason why it goes a bit funky is because it's capsule collision. That's the only thing I'd really try and fix and make it a bit better. Because um, I made a capsule collision, I don't think moves as as you think it would. Um, if I made a capsule collision see through, I think it's going to get it doesn't move really. So try and do something with that, I guess, to make it a bit better. Um, but yeah, that works really well. Cool, I'm impressed with that. Um, yeah, if I'm, if I'm able to, at some point, make uh, this into a longer video with more extra bits of like animation on it as well, and actual proper launching off at the end, because I don't know launching off at the end either, so that could be interesting to do too. Um, yeah, not bad, cool. I enjoyed that, that was fun. Anywho, um, thank you very much everyone for joining today's live stream. Uh, this has been Question Time. We do this every Wednesday, so if, sorry for those who didn't get that question answered, but come by next Wednesday get your questions in that time too and don't forget if you're a patreon member you can go to our discord channel go to the question time q jump where you can ask your question ahead of time and get it in there now, if you want to watch this back after the after the show's ended head over to patreon.com forward slash ryan ailey where you can support the channel and you can watch this back from just one dollar a month including all the new videos one big thing to note uh today has seen the start of my c plus plus series on patreon um so we started the primer course on there the first three episodes we've got another four another nine of them to go up on patreon over the next couple of days so uh we're going to start going through c plus plus there on patreon so thank you very much everyone for joining by and um yeah it's been it's been fun i've really enjoyed uh today's live stream and i look forward to doing next week's one this weekend we are doing project mimic so if you want to come by to watch project mimic getting worked on and have a look at that and see what's going on and learn some things from that so come by then and check out progress on that thanks very much everyone have a good evening and i'll talk to you soon bye bye